Hello everyone, I'm Ola and this is Coding is for Girls. So far we learned a very basics of Python programming language. And if you feel lost, you should not worry. It's normal, there is a lot of knowledge you need to absorb. And it takes time. Lately, when I was uploading one of my Python Basics videos, someone pointed me out that I'm leaving you links to the Python documentation. And the thing is that Python documentation is very technical and it's very, very hard for beginners to make any sense of that. That is why I decided that I will dedicate whole episode just talking about Python documentation. How to use it, how to find information you are looking for and what the things described there means. First thing to remember is that when you start to learn Python, there is absolutely no obligation for you to read whole Python documentation. And it is so, so big that I doubt that any person, any programmer out there actually read everything from the very beginning to the end. Maybe there is somebody there, but I don't know them. So it is not about learning every single thing that is described in Python documentation, but it's about knowing how to use Python documentation when you are looking for something. You could treat Python documentation as a language dictionary. When you learn new language, you don't need to know every single word in given language. And I bet even native speakers don't know every single word in their native language. It's all about knowing enough words to make you fluent and then being able to look up whatever is missing for you. Okay, so first thing, where is Python documentation? Python docs are available online and you can access them anytime you need. You just need to go to the www.python.org. This is the website managed by Python Software Foundation, an organization that takes care of Python as a programming language. Now let's click in Docs tab, and here it is, Python documentation. In top left corner, there is a drop-down that allows you to change between Python versions. Python is updated regularly, but there are a lot of people who are not using the newest version out there, and a lot of people use older versions, so it's very, very important to know what version of Python you are using and check the documentation. If you followed my videos step by step, it should be 3.4.3. But if you jumped somewhere in the middle, then you might have different version installed. Let's open the console and type Python 3 minus minus version and click enter. As I mentioned, my version of Python is th this one. However, I have also installed another one that my Mac is using too. If I type this, Python, space, minus, minus version, and click Enter, you'll see that my default Python version is 2.7.10. OK, we know what version of Python we are using. Let's go back to documentation. I'm switching to 3.4 version, and now I see all relevant things for me. There is a link to all the things that were added in Python 3.4, compared to the previous version, 3.3. We also have linked to tutorial. And this one might be very interesting for you because it introduces all parts of Python. For example, using Python interpreter, things we already talked about, like numbers, text, lists, different control flows tools, including if statements and for loops, you already know. Then you could read about functions and data structures, modules, errors, classes, and so on and so on. This part will be very useful for you right now. But there is also another important link, which is language reference. This gathers more advanced and more ordered topics. For now, let's go back to tutorial part and look at the something we already read about. For example, if statement. On the left-hand side, we have a table of content for this page, but what I do most of the time is using search in my browser. I just click Command and F or Ctrl and F if you don't use Mac, 
and just type whatever you are interested in. For example, text else, and all occurrences are highlighted so I don't need to read everything on the page. In green boxes you have code examples. This is extremely useful and shows you how to use given thing. Here we see example usage of if a leaf else statement. Python documentation might be scary because it uses jargon a lot and it's very technical. It also assumes that you know a lot already. It is like learning any language out there. You don't need to know every single word in the sentence and what matters is to understand the general concept. If you don't really know what things means, try to find code examples, run it in your Python interpreter, try to figure out what's going on there and go back to the documentation and maybe it will make much more sense then. Okay, let's go back to documentation. Let's leave tutorial and go to the language reference. Let's say we would like to read more about building types. We already know some of them, for example string. I will be lazy and look at the page using my command f shortcut and type build minus in. Now I see that section number 4 contains information about building types and there is a sequence text part under 4.7 subsection. Let's click and see. First we see explanation what string is. It might seem a bit complicated right now. Then if we scroll a little bit down we see string methods section. Remember when we talked about building methods of the string? We used upper method that was changing all the characters in our text into uppercase. Now we can see and read about all the available methods on the string we can use, not only upper or lower, with so many different ones. Let's look for example on method called capitalize. str part here means that this is a part of building type string. Then the bold part is the name of the method. Here we have capitalize. That means that we will use it like this. Our text, for example name Ola and then dot, so Python knows we will access part of the text type. Then we type name of the method, so capitalize. Finally, we will use opening and close parentheses. Methods act similarly like functions, but they are attached to the certain thing here a string. Let's read what the capitalize method does. It states, return a copy of string with its first character capitalized and the rest lowercase. Let's find another example. Let's look for the method called replace. This function is taking our text and replace occurrences of the certain smaller text with the same other thing. For example, if we have longer text like this, my name is Ola, Ola is a popular name in Poland, I had many friends called Ola, and we would like to change all occurrences of name Ola into Mary, we could do that using replace method. Okay, but how we could use this function? Because Python documentation is showing all these weird things in parentheses. What these things mean? Old and new are arguments for this method. So when you call replace, you always need to provide old value, so the text you want to replace, and then a new value, so text you want to replace it with. So in our example, we'll need to take our text, then do replace, and in parentheses, we'll first say hola, and then Mary. But what this square parentheses and the name count means? If we have something in a square parentheses, it means we can provide it as an argument to the method, but only when we want to. So square parenthesis means that the argument is optional. So anything that is not in square parenthesis is obligatory, and everything that is inside is optional. So for example, we cannot type our text.replace and then open and close parenthesis. That will fail. However, we can write replace method without providing count argument. So we could have our text dot replace Ola and Mary, so the Python will change all occurrences of Ola in the text and change it into Mary. Or 
if we would like to change only the first two occurrences of Ola into Mary and the last should be left alone, we could add the argument count. So our text dot replace Ola, Mary and then two. Okay, so we know what square parenthesis means in Python documentation. Let's look for something else to explain. We will look for another built-in method called starts with. It basically checks if the given text starts with a given string. For example, if we have text Ola likes Python, we could check if the text starts with Ola. We already know that starts with is the name of the method and we should use that after our text. Then we have one required argument, prefix. This is the text that we will look if the text is starting with. In this scenario, it's Ola. Then there is something weird. We already know that square parenthesis means that argument is optional. But what with this inner square parenthesis? The inner square parenthesis means that it is obviously optional argument. But it also means that we can provide it only if the previous optional argument was provided. That means we cannot use this function like this. We cannot provide AND without providing start argument. Why is that? So far we used only functions and method that knew what the given value represents only by the order in which the arguments were given. So in Python, order of arguments matter. So now we type free as a start argument and it means that we will start checking our text from letter in the position 3 and we will stop at the letter in the position 6. Ok, time for the last thing I want to show you today that will make you understand Python documentation better. This thing is named arguments. Apart from the arguments you need to provide in the correct order for Python to know what is what, there are also named arguments. In this scenario, you don't need to remember what was the order of them. You just used the name of the argument and then Python knows what is where. How does it look like? Well, let's look at an example. This time we will look at the method split. This method is dividing a text into small chunks and breaks it using the separator we provide. Here, inside, we have named arguments. Sep and max split. Every named argument needs to have default value that is provided after equal sign. Here, sep has default empty value and max split argument that tells us how many times we want to split our text has value minus one. Now, when we would like to split a text, for example, www.jankogers.org and divide it into parts that are between dots, then we would use the function like this. Our text dot split sep equals dot. If we run it, we will get a list containing bits between dots, but without dots. So www, another one will be Django Girls and org. Now we could provide a max split value, for example, one, and run it. And when we save and run it in console, we will get www and jungleverse.org. Now, let's see what happens when we reverse order of the named arguments. Will it work? So we split text only on the first dot. So we will have our text dot split, max split one and sep, which is dot. This time it worked. If you have optional arguments in function or method and you want to have default value, and don't want to remember an exact order of arguments, you should use named arguments. That was quite a few things we already learned about Python documentation. First of all, where to find it. Then that we need to always use documentation for the correct version of Python, the version we are currently using. Then we learned how to recognize if the argument of the function or method is obligatory or it's optional. And also, we learned about named arguments. Obviously, there is so much more about Python documentation and I'm considering having another video on this topic. 
For now, I think it's enough to get you started. And I hope that next time you will look at the Python documentation, you will not feel so lost anymore. Please comment down below if there is something in Python documentation that is very confusing for you. Uh, it will help me to gather information what should I tackle in my next video about Python documentation. I hope you enjoy this very long video and you feel much, much more comfortable with Python documentation now. If you want to learn how to program with me, make sure to subscribe to this channel and stay tuned. Have a lovely day and see you!